Greetings. Today I'm going to show you this EcoEarth branded corn cob format LED light fitting. I bought this to replace a compact fluorescent tube and at first glance you know it comes in the box and you can see it's got the C mark on there. If you look on the website they've got the rose mark. It's all you know, it says that they're uh, they're very eco-friendly and, and whatnot. So, and they, they even come with a two-year warranty. And if you get any problems with them, as long as you haven't burnt them out, they'll sort it out for you. So, I thought, yeah, great. We'll take a look at that. And uh, this is what's arrived. You'll notice the um, what we've got is a load of it's. It seems, it's 42 LEDs. This is the 7 watt version. You can get different sizes, you can get different bases as well. It's a 7 watt warm white version of the bulb. And it looks quite looks quite nice. Um, slightly concerning that the uh, there are bare metal connections on on these LEDs. Which you can see if I bring that up to the camera. It's you can see there are contacts along here. More on that in a second. Um, but when I saw that, I thought, right, I'm going to make sure the fitting is off before I swap this, uh, before I plug this in. Just you know, just just to be careful, because I have seen another YouTube video, and I'll put a link in the description here to the uh, to the other video with someone showing off uh, one of these um, GU10 mains halogen replacements, and. You were testing it with the meter and and looking at the circuit diagram, and there was a lot of high voltages. Or, you know, depending on which way you fitted it in, you could. It was a pretty good chance of getting an electric shock from the LEDs. But anyway, we'll scrub that. That was the GU10. Uh, this is a completely different fitting, completely different manufacturer. So let's go and check the light output in a fitting. To do a light output comparison, I've locked the settings on my camera, so I've got fixed white balance, the iris is fixed open, and the shutter is fixed at 50 frames per second. And the light you're seeing now is from one of these, which is a Philips Genie 11 watt. In fact, it's a few years old. One of these popped last week, which is why I bought um, a replacement. So that's the output from the Philips Genie compact fluorescent. And that is the output from the EcoEarse LED fitting, rated at 7 watts. Now I'm pretty impressed with that light output. It's, uh, it surprised me. For a 7 watt LED, they do seem to be coming into their own. It looks almost like you've got um, a very... It's almost like you've got a corn cob fitting with a very bright lamp inside just shining through the holes. That's, that's the appearance it, it seems to give. Um, if I bring the camera closer up to it while it's, while it's on, if I can. Get it out of the broken tripod. You can see, there we go. You can see there are six on each strip six sides, six strips around, plus a further six LEDs sitting on the top. It's got a nice LED. If I compare, uh, if I compare now with the, uh, let's just put this 25 watt pygmy bulb on right alongside. You can see there's not a lot of light from that pygmy compared to, compared to the seven watt LED light. And the reason I've got this pygmy bulb is all going to become clear in a moment because this, as far as I'm concerned, is the testing the light output bit of the review, and it's a very good light output. It's a very, it's a nice bright bulb as a as a replacement light fit, fitting. It seems to fit the bill, or does it? Now this is where it was lucky that I was testing that I didn't put the thing in live. Remember I was saying about those metal contacts on that bulb? Well, let's do a little bit of testing. 
the test setup we've got here is pretty simple. Now I could give you an example of high voltage coming from the power supply, but that means nothing. I can get around about 100 volts leakage, leakage voltage from this plug top power supply which came from a Zixel uh, branded network switch, so quite a quality branded switch. I won't get a shock from this, what I'll find if I'm touching it or the metal case and I brush my knuckle against something grounded such as the uh, the, the light switch, um, you can feel like a sort of roughness if you like, you can feel as you move your, th your knuckle across you can feel the mains hum if you like. But there's nothing wrong with that. I can get 90 volts off that, no problem, but the current is so low, it's not a problem. What I'm going to test with is something slightly different. What we've got here is an example use for one of these bulbs. It's a table lamp, a very scabby old table lamp. It's about 30 years old. It's, I've had this for, for years now. That's got the bulb in. You know, anyone, you know, you may well find one of these corn cob bulbs could go into a table lamp or other such low level, easily accessed device. Then I've got my meter probe, which goes to my fluke, which is in the amps range, the 10 amps range, in fact, rather than the 40 milliamp one. Uh, it's set for AC. The negative lead then. From that, the black lead goes into this block connector, which goes into this brown wire, which goes into this scabby old bulb holder, which goes to this 25 watt pygmy bulb, which you saw lit up earlier on. And I can prove that that is a 25 watt pygmy bulb. If you watch this light here, this meter here, I, in fact, I don't even need to switch that on. If I Run that probe in if I pop that shutter open and put this probe in here, we should see oh when I knock the switch on is the pygmy bulb lights and we've got 25 watts on the meter. This is a Belkin energy meter. They were on special offer from um, dabs.com and they were doing them cheap for 12, 13 quid a bot too. So that is monitoring everything. It's got, this is basically a training lead and there is the, the energy measurement side of this. This is designed so you can have it up on a table while the socket is down out of the way. So that's how much I'm drawing with this little pygmy bulb. So that's what the pygmy bulb is there for. It's basically, so if I touch anything live with this, the bulb will light. I'm not going to short it to ground through and blow the fuse with my meter. If this touches something live, such as that terminal, the bulb lights up. You'd get that with a neon screwdriver anyway, without getting a shock. You can get you, know, you can touch things with it, which will light up a neon screwdriver. A plasma ball will light up a neon screwdriver. You're not going to get a belt off it. Um, but this will do, will will not light up if you connected it to a plasma ball, because there's not enough current available. This will light up if there's enough voltage and enough current to light that filament. And the other end of that then goes down to this unfused plug. It's just the neutral wire going into there. So that's the circuit. We've got probe to meter to bulb to neutral. So let's knock the bulb on. There we go. Look at that, nice and bright. Now what I shouldn't get, if I touch any of those metal parts on there, any of those contacts, that should not light that power consumption should not go up and that shouldn't measure any current. So let's pick, let's go something easy, top connection there and look at that. Power consumption has gone up by nearly 2 watts and I'm pulling 43 milliamps through that bulb. So there'd be more available, if I touch that connection there'd be a lot more available. Why the hell isn't this covered in glass or plastic? Why are all these 
live connections available to touch. And you may be thinking, okay, RCD will pick up on that. What about when it's in a light fitting? You check your house. A lot of houses have no RCD protection on the lights. You generally, you don't need them. The lights don't develop a fault that generally makes them, makes them go live. Okay, newer houses, any cabling that's in a wall needs to be protected, so the whole lot tends to be on RCD. But the older houses, you've got a split load board and any circuits which you don't want protected by RCD in case you know something packs in and plunges that you don't want it plunging the house into darkness, you would not be protected against that 43 milliamps then. So that I think is pretty lousy. But but it gets worse. Let's take this lamp out. Rotate it 180 degrees to reverse the connections on the bayonet and put it back in. Oops. Lights up exactly the same. Let's take another one of these LEDs. Oh, by the way, you can see it's not the case that's live. I haven't rigged this. Let's pick one of these. Look at that. Much brighter. Power consumption has now gone up to 25.7 watts. I'm drawing 83 milliamps through that bulb, just through one of these LEDs. 83 milliamps on that one. 82 milliamps, 82, 83 on that. You can see it's much the same anywhere I go on this fitting. I can pull 80 milliamps of current from there and that's only because I'm using a 25 watt pygmy bulb. That should not happen. That should be in a plastic case. It's fine as a light source in, in that um, if it's protected from contact, I mean you get a burn if you touched an incandescent light bulb that had been on for half an hour. But a burn, you'll snatch away, ow, that was nasty. You won't get an electric shock from, an, from a bulb like that. You won't get an electric shock from a 500 watt halogen bulb. You'll just get a nasty burn from it. This thing could kill you. A burn from, a, from a, a, an incandescent light bulb is not gonna stop your heart. This thing can. So you've had all that nice C marking. Oh yes, it's great, it's nice, it's safe. Look, it's ROSE certified. It's got all these C markings and everything. They give a two year warranty. Yes, you can even download these nice test charts that show the light pattern and the output from it to show, yes, this is how it must go. Look, trust us, trust us. It's a bloody dangerous piece of shit. That's what it is. Am I getting unduly annoyed at this? I don't think so. I think it's a pretty bloody good concern. You get some kids who go, oh yeah, that looks cool. I'll add that in my desk lamp, right, right by my bed. Great, you got live parts there. You wouldn't have a whole live desk lamp and only the bloody, the switch being safe to touch, would you? No, you'd want that whole thing enclosed. And the same thing goes for this bloody thing. That should not happen. Like I said, 82 watts, 83 watts, uh, sorry, 83 milliamps, 26 watts I'm pulling now. In fact, what the hell? Let's try that with something a little bit beefier. Let's try it with 100 and see what happens if I touch that contact there. Now I'm going to pull back this time. I'm pulling 32 watts. 157 milliamps of leakage current. That is strobing like buggery there. It's taken down an entire section and it's just gone off. It's gone off. And in fact, it'll stay lit now. That's blown part of the power supply circuit.
taken down the whole strip permanently. Look at that. Nothing's knackered. That could have been your hand touching that thing. What a piece of shit. And typical. I thought, great, before testing it, uh, before I tested it tonight tonight now. Oh, that's, that's nice. That works great as one. I'll buy another five because I need six in the living room. Great, I've got six dangerous lamps now. Bloody things. And seems I've popped it. I might as well break the thing open. And let's have a look at the dodgy circuit in question. My guess, capacitor, resistor, diode bridge, and not a lot else. How the hell do I get this thing open? Stamp on it, that's how. Okay, what we got is an LED headboard there. This board connects out to the, the boards around the side, as you can see, with all the connections made at the top edge. These boards, I should think I can slide them out. Let's, there we go. That's quite a tough one here. There we go. Right, so that's the LED clusters out. All bar top one. Snap the DC plus and minus connections there. You can see there's a circuit down inside that, which we need to now get at. And I can see already there's not much of a circuit in there. And to get that out, I need to remove that. That shifted. Yeah, that shifted it. It's pinched on there. Let's pop those cables out of there. me with a gummed down circuit, it's siliconed in, and it's out. Right then, here is your LED driver circuit. Well, BP treble zero two corn power, 2011-10-30. And all we have, we have the AC in, we have much the same as I believe has been seen in the GU10s. We have, here's the circuit diagram. And as you can see, the only thing between you and mains electricity, if you touch those LEDs, is a diode, in this case D4, and a 10 ohm fusible resistor. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, if you're the, uh, the manufacturers, I'm sure trading standards are going to be in touch with you, because I'm getting in touch with trading standards.